we talked a lot about the things we need to change. I think we all agree there's a lot of possibilities, but then how are we going to do this? You know, And what I really want to come down to at the end of this whole course is that it takes people to make the change. And every one of us needs to make a contribution to this. So let me start this out by citing a quote from Norman Borlaug, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970, the only agricultural scientist ever winning this, uh, for the successes that he spearheaded for the Green Revolution. And he said once, I am but one member of a vast team made of many organizations, officials, thousands of scientists, and millions of farmers, mostly small and humble, who for many years have been fighting a quite oftentimes losing war on the food production front. So all of us should now think, well, how can we join this team and win this war? And it doesn't matter whether you work in business, whether you are a farmer, whether you're a policy maker, a teacher, a student, a consumer, a scientist, an advocate in a grassroots organization, an extension worker, a donor, a philanthropist, all of us can do something. Particularly if we bring it down and start small with getting our own house in order. Well, that means at work, where you live, how you interact with your institution, at home, in your daily life with your family, what you eat, where you buy it, how do you recycle it. Throw out the worst food. Stop eating junk food or drinking sugary drinks or buying highly processed food, which you're not quite sure whether it's the right thing to have. So read up a bit more on the science behind these things to understand what it all is about. You know? Build an opinion based on the best available evidence and then change. You know? And most importantly, whenever you have a chance, go and visit the farm. Talk to the people who produce the food and learn how passionate they are about this. But let's hear now from all of our lectures what they think they can do and what you can do to make a difference. I think my biggest contribution is teaching the next young leaders. I think it's one of my greatest achievements and my proudest achievements is when I travel around the world and I see some of my former students in interesting positions solving complex issues of the food system. While that seems like an obvious answer, it actually is one of the biggest joys of my life and something that I don't think publishing a paper or writing a grant you ever get the satisfaction of is when you see someone who you maybe had a little influence on make a change and work in your field and um, go on to do great things. So what can you do to address some of the topics that I've talked about? Well, I think there's a few things. The first is the way you eat, the choices that you make. I think I've convinced you that, one, you should try to eat a bit more healthy avoiding things like salt, sugar, and fat, but maybe also think about the high impact on the environment that some of our dietary choices make. Your diet choices can make a difference, not only for the planet, but for the human population as well. The second thing I think you can do is the issue of climate change. You will be facing potentially dire consequences if we do not do something about climate change. So make the right voting decisions. Think about leaders who can take action, have the political will, have a moral obligation to mitigate climate change. This is gonna impact the food system in a dramatic way, so your vote counts. So thinking about what an individual can do beyond learning and talking with others, I think there's a lot of changes we can make in our own lifestyles. I often think about my own diet, my family's diet, thinking about trying to eat what poor people grow because those are things that use relatively little resources. So it's a very plant-based diet, but I do eat meat and fish. And in particular, thinking about combining whole grains of cereal grains with leguminous grains. So I eat a lot of peanut butter and a lot of other you know, chickpeas and so forth, but also being very location specific. So when you travel, eat foods that are locally used and that makes a huge difference. Probably the single most relevant thing that I do is I work with a great deal of fanaticism on the problem of mycotoxins. So this problem is sort of convergence between plant pathology, which is my disciplinary role, and then something to do with climate change and 
sustainability of agricultural systems in general. Mycotoxins are toxic metabolites that are produced by microfungi that grow on food crops. So when foods are grown under stress, they're vulnerable to these molds, and these molds grow in the crop before and after harvest and produce these, these compounds that are carcinogenic that suppress the immune system, that impair children's growth, probably because by messing up the gut lining. So when farming systems are stressed, the crops are stressed, and the very limited food that are, is available to people is also poisonous. I just find that so horrific that I'm quite energetic and, and trying to do something about it, so that's my own cause. I would say, you know, devote your life to these issues in manner of your choice. It's, these are really broad, important issues. And if there's some way that you can see to make your career engage with these issues, I, I think it can make you a happy and inspired and satisfied person because these are such big and important issues. And failing that, yeah, live in a manner and vote in a manner that's consistent, that cares for the future of the planet. I think we've all got to realize that if agriculture is going to be able to intensify, that farmers have got to earn more. And that means that we need to pay more for our food. Now, there are ways of doing that which can be transmitted directly back to smallholder farmers, and that's often through fair trade or some of those other ways. So what can you do? Well, for me, the bottom line is for many of these smallholder farmers that I work with in Africa, they simply don't have good markets for their produce. One way of helping them is to buy fair trade produce, where basically more of the profit gets remitted back to farmers. Another thing, basically, though, is to be aware, to recognize the fact that there are so many of these smallholder farmers within our production chains, and that we need to think in the longer term, how can we provide people with other forms of income so that some of them can get out of farming and to allow those farms to actually get larger. We tend to romanticize smallholder farming in a way which I think is really unproductive in the long term. So in my own work, I have two large lines of research going at the moment. One is particularly around uh, the grain legume crops, so looking at capturing biological nitrogen fixation into a form that can provide nutritious food and products to sell for farmers. And the other one's actually looking at how we can increase the productivity of many of the commodity crops, coffee, cocoa, oil palm and the like, because a large proportion of these is produced by smallholders. And of course, if we can increase the productivity, we can really give them direct benefits in terms of income. My pledge to you is to think about the type of livestock products you buy. Is it better to buy local products? Think about production systems and how that meat and milk has been produced. And revalue where your livestock products should be on your food plate. We talked about in the lecture the balance between ruminants and monogastrics. It's very easy to demonize livestock production systems, but they have a vital role for food security. One produces less emissions, one competes less for human edible feed. So we need to think about the balance of our food plate around sustainability. In terms of individual choices on how to address water problems, particularly related to agriculture, I think the most significant choice you can make is a healthy diet, which also translates into a reduction in water use across the planet. Uh, just to give you an idea, the amount of water used by agriculture is around between 70 to 99 percent of the total water use country by country. Imagine that you're a cow, you're eating quite a bit more than the human, and then you take a small chunk of the cow and eat it. So that small chunk actually represents years of consumption by the cow, and as a result, much, much more water has gone into that than in your directly eating cereals, for example. So the most significant direct activity you can do is to limit the amount of derived products of agriculture, particularly animal-related products. I'm a vegetarian. I'm not religious about it. I'll eat meat if that's the tastiest thing around. Uh, so boiled vegetables versus a barbecued hamburger, I'll eat the barbecued hamburger, but the frequency with which I do that is small enough that I think it's okay. 
So my choice to contribute to sustainability in aquaculture and fisheries is by selecting the food that I buy. Uh, and I'm searching particularly those uh, 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 seafood products that have received an, uh, an eco label or a label for sustainability. And there are a couple of them that are very known and very well organized, like the Marine Stewardship Council uh, eco label for capture fisheries and the Aquaculture Stewardship Council label for found uh, fish. And in the United States, you also have the Global Aquaculture Alliance uh, BAP label that is also very well uh, uh, organized. So what you could do is also search for those products that have and received these uh, labels. That would make a big difference. And of course, try to avoid tuna uh, uh, and, and any other carnivorous species, that highly migratory and highly carnivorous species, and try to eat more of the low trophic level organisms like shellfish or tilapia or catfishes and these kind of organisms. That would help already a lot because if we eat more of these carnivorous animals, we will force the industry also to feed these animals with high protein diets. And the proteins can not only come for these fishes at least from uh, plant ingredients, it also needs to come then from marine resources. And we try to save these marine resources as much as possible. I'm now 55 years old, so in a way uh, I'm that generation who is responsible for the mess that uh, we have to deal with now, or sometimes it's perceived as that. But I also feel pretty proud that in this generation we've made a lot of progress in agriculture of the positive kind. So what can I still do in the rest of my life to make a difference? Uh, I think there are two things that I'm really passionate about and really want to spend more time on. One is I really want to be a champion for the new sustainable development goals and in my world that means I need to bring many people behind that even in my own organization. I can do a lot to make sure that the science we do at Rossumstedt Research as an institute is of the right kind uh, and hopefully also then it's much more addressing the right kind of problems that are relevant for the future of agriculture. So that's my major contribution that I really need to concentrate on. The second one is more practical. I'm passionate about a better agronomy because I believe it's one of the key ingredients of producing food in a better way. And to do this, I really need to go back to the drawing board and spend more time in the field again. Whenever I have a chance, meeting, but also working more with farmers and most importantly, bringing more scientists back to the field. So rounding this up, this whole course uh, has been about agriculture and food. I think what you have learned is that everyone has an opinion on that, you know, which is good, because it also illustrates that we all recognize how important this is. You know. I think you have also learned by now, and hopefully also start to appreciate it, that agriculture is incredibly complex, but also incredibly exciting. And I hope that you have also understood that uh, despite the big challenges and problems that we have, many solutions exist already or are possible if we work better together and have an open, pragmatic mindset for that. So together, that's how we can make a change.